I got a haircut. Whether we realize it or not, artificial intelligence is all around us. Right now, it's a bit of a buzzword. Um, artificial intelligence has been around since 1950, but the real innovation is generative AI. While traditional AI aimed to replace just parts of the brain, generative AI is trying to replace all of it. It can see, hear, think, create, and understand most of the time better than humans. So today I wanna to dive into the implications of AI, how we can future-proof ourselves, why we shouldn't dread it, and how we can use prompt engineering to become indisposable. By the way, this room is actually not a room. Let's get into it. So first, we ought to define what artificial intelligence actually is, right? So artificial intelligence is a simulation of human intelligence in machines that we create uh, that are programmed to learn and think like humans. The things that artificial intelligence can do is it can learn, it can acquire knowledge and skills uh, and improve over time. It can also reason, uh, it can use logical deduction to solve problems, it can also perceive things. Right now, ChatGPT Vision came out and it can actually like read uh, handwriting on paper and like you can scan your refrigerator and it'll tell you like what meals you can make with the stuff in your uh, refrigerator. Uh, it understands natural language. So you can speak to it as you would speak to a friend or um, anybody and it would understand what you want. Um, it can also be fluent in multiple languages. And similar to humans, it can understand sentiment, intention, and uh, like meaning when you speak uh, based on your dialect and how you word certain things. And it's also creative. It's, it, gets, it gives you new ideas. It can draw, it can um, write creatively. Uh, it can write poetry. Um, it can now make videos. And now DeepMind has made a software that can make interactive videos or video games. So there's two types of artificial intelligence. There's narrow AI and general AI. Narrow AI is designed with one function of the human brain in mind, right? So it's designed to perform one task exceedingly well, um, and it doesn't possess consciousness or self-awareness. Not saying general AI does, but in the future, general AI will be what does. And general AI is AI that's designed to replace the human brain. It outperforms humans in almost every facet of what we do. Um, it truly understands and knows and reasons. A complete general AI is still somewhat theoretical. Um, ChatGPT is coming very close, or GPT, but um, a general AI of the strongest type would, or like the actual general AI would actually just replace humans. And since AI technology is advancing at such a rapid pace, it could come pretty soon. As of right now though, artificial intelligence can enhance human efficiency and we can use it to augment our abilities to do better and more creative work. So where can we find artificial intelligence? Right now, a lot of search engines are implementing artificial intelligence to their way that they bring content to the user. So for example, this is Arc. It is my browser. It is an artificial intelligence powered browser. So let's look here for parks in Frisco, Texas, and hit browse for me. And it's going to compile all the information from these sites and then give it to me in a personalized website, right? This is all done by artificial intelligence. Warren Sports Complex, Central Park, Limestone Quarry Park, BF Community, blah, blah, blah. So this is not what a typical search engine does. This is what a artificial intelligence powered search engine does. No search engine can do this as of right now. So, I don't know, let's pick uh, Beaver's Bend Park. And once again, it gives me all the information about Beaver's Bend, plus this is shareable. This is what artificial intelligence is enabling us to do right now. Then artificial intelligence is in every single voice assistant that is existing today. So. Siri, navigate to Beaver's Bend Park. Getting directions to Beaver's Bend Park. That's artificial intelligence. And here's another example. When we navigate somewhere using Google Maps or Apple Maps, it is real time calculating the fastest route to that place. So in navigation apps, we also experience artificial intelligence.
Another thing that uses artificial intelligence uh, that we use almost every single day is uh, social media apps, Instagram, Snapchat, uh, TikTok. Their algorithms are designed to keep you on their apps for as long as possible, scrolling, wasting your time, uh, giving them valuable advertisement money. It learns what you like, it learns the things that you spend the most time on and pushes it to you. Um, another one is email spam filters. If you ever uh, find that an email ends up in spam, that's because an algorithm using artificial intelligence put it there. And then if you found this video through YouTube recommended, gosh, this win, then that was artificial intelligence too. Their algorithm uses artificial intelligence to push recommended videos to you, uh, depending on what you like. And then smart home devices, uh, e-commerce, healthcare, uh, banking and fraud prevention are all fields and devices that use artificial intelligence. So what does artificial intelligence have the potential to do, right? It can solve complex problems, it can think, it can reason, it can create, it improves efficiency, it can automate mundane tasks that we as humans don't wanna do, it can do tasks that we as humans cannot do, um, my dad has already hired me to engineer prompts for his company because it's such a valuable skill already, prompt engineering, and that's something we'll talk about later. In the future, we're looking at personalized medicine for patients, um, early detection of disease, customized learning for individual students, fully autonomous vehicles, smart cities, automated waste management, possibly creating new jobs in the AI field, but that's a possibility. Uh, streamlined operations from manufacturing to distribution to consumerism, um, and eventually sentience. No, I'm just kidding, hopefully not. So now we know what AI can do and we know what it could be capable of, so how do we as humans leverage that? As much as I am an advocate for reading and writing and stuff on paper, if you don't, tap into artificial intelligence and learn how it works and leverage it, you're gonna get left behind. At least AI can't do that yet. He said this guy's kinda cracked. So my good friend often reminds me that becoming too reliant on artificial intelligence is dangerous. And I agree. So I think if we look at it as a tool instead of a crutch, it can be extremely important and effective for augmenting the way that we humans function. So for schoolwork, ChatGPT has been indispensable to me um, because of the way that it acts as the best teacher of all time to me, right? It caters to all of my needs. Uh, it tells me exactly what I need. It tells me exactly how to do stuff. I can keep asking it questions and it will never get tired. Uh, ChatGPT's function to search the web is also extremely important because it allows me to do more in-depth uh, research just using ChatGPT. So for example, say here we ask it, um, what is the professional consensus regarding Bitcoin price uh, at the end of this quarter? Right, so here we go. It gave me the professional consensus on Bitcoin's price and is searching for me and giving me sources um, for the information that it's giving me, right? And this isn't just for like this, you can use it for anything. I use it for schoolwork all the time. Um, it's just more effective than using a search engine. Also, ChatGPT can code. This is insane, because I have a basic understanding of Java and JavaScript, but I don't know Python, and yet I was able to create an app that sends me um, information every morning regarding stocks I'm interested in um, through an email newsletter, like just to me. And I didn't know how to code any of it. It was all ChatGPT. All I had to learn how to do was prompt it effectively, right? So you don't even need to know how to code anymore. You just have to know how to use AI and talk to it better. AI can also see. So the other day my shower drain wasn't really draining that well. And so I asked it, I took a picture and I was like, why isn't it draining well? Um, this model and it knew how to fix it and it told me how to fix it and I fixed it and it was just as easy as that. So generative AI has so much potential and people tend to take uh, stances along one line of reasoning to AI. So there are people who are dismissive of AI. They think that it's not going anywhere, it's just a fad. Um, those people are wrong. That's not true. Do not dismiss AI. It is the next thing. Um, if you dismiss AI, you're going to get left behind. It's going to be bad for you. So don't just turn up your nose at it. Um, it is important. The other side is being afraid of it. 
People are afraid that AI is going to take their jobs. People are afraid that AI is going to make humans become useless. Um, there is a little bit of truth in that, but instead of being afraid, uh, which will do you no good at all, it's better to take steps now to ensure that you are indispensable when AI inevitably does become more widespread. Though I think we can be a little bit of af afraid of it becoming sentient because that's that's scary. Um, I don't know if it's gonna happen, I don't know when, but if it does happen, that's something to be afraid of. But as of right now, we know AI, what it can do, its potential, but its limitless potential is limited by how well we can interact with it. And that's where prompt engineering comes in. So what exactly is prompt engineering? Uh, let's ask ChatGPT. Give me a concise definition of prompt engineering. The process of designing and refining the inputs given to artificial intelligence models, particularly in the natural language processing and generative AI, to achieve specific desired outputs. This involves strategically crafting prompts to guide the model's response or actions, optimizing for clarity, context, and specificity to improve the accuracy, relevance, and quality of the model's outputs. Like I said before, generative AI can do pretty much anything, but it's just limited by our ability to engineer good prompts. A bad prompt is guaranteed to give you a useless, um, ineffective response from artificial intelligence, but a good prompt can give you exactly what you need, exactly how you need it, um, in the language that you need it in, or in the format that you need it in. A good prompt can basically make AI do anything. So the way I like to think of it is that artificial intelligence, or in this case, ChatGPT for me, is this person who is the embodiment of all human knowledge in the history of humanity ever. Super smart, but he's also dumb because he has all this knowledge, but he doesn't know how to give it to you unless you tell him exactly how to give it to you. He'll be as dumb as you ask him to be, but he'll be also be as smart as you allow him to be. So with prompt engineering, we're asking him the right questions to elicit exactly the right information that we need in the format that we need it in. Three things to keep in mind as you engineer prompts. Clarity, specificity, and iterative refinement. So clarity, when you're prompting AI, don't ask it something super ambiguous. Be clear and concise with what you want it to do. Then specificity, right? So be specific about tasks you want it to perform. So being specific is going to give you exactly what you need from AI in the way that you want it. If you're not specific, it'll give it to you in some way that you don't want. That's guaranteed. Iterative refinement. Um, it's inevitable that AI is not going to give you the response you need exactly how you want it the first time every time. So as you communicate with it, you're iterating and making your prompt better and better as you go. I also find that you can ask ChatGPT to help you make a prompt for it to you. And the last kind of tip I have is you can make AI uh, play a role. So you can tell it that it's a professional, um, I don't know, medical doctor and then you can ask it for things and it'll respond differently than if you just ask it. So let's take a look at how uh, different prompts can change AI's response, right? All right, let's just take an example of this economics lecture I found online. So we're gonna paste it and say, um, here is an economics lecture transcript. Don't do anything with it yet. Okay, it didn't send anything. So the first prompt we're gonna try is Take notes on this lecture. And we'll see how it does it. Okay, so here's what it gave us. It's not bad. It's very uh, high level. Um, it looks like it got most of the important things from the lecture, but let's try modifying that with one I had made earlier um, and see how it handles that. Okay, so here's what it gave us. Um, it's a little bit poorly formatted with indentation right now, but I think if we paste it into, it'll get better. That's a little bit better. All right, so here's what it gave us. It's a very structured um, outline, exactly how I'd asked it to. So Roman numerals are kind of the big points that the lecture hit on, and then ABC is like subcategories, and then one, two is details, right? Um, I would prefer this over the other one. Um, and it's only because we gave it a more specific prompt that it gave us that one, right? So that's how important the prompt is 
when you're talking with artificial intelligence. So getting better at prompting AI is certainly important, but we also need to know how to keep up with its advancements in the future. Um, that includes staying relevant and staying knowledgeable. So as AI technologies advance, we need to be able to stay relevant with what they're gonna be able to be capable of doing. And we need to learn to be adaptable to what AI is gonna be able to do eventually so that when it starts improving, we're gonna be the best at it as it comes. Continue to learn and inform your own expertise on AI so that you can be the best at whatever it is you're doing by the time that thing comes out. But for now, there are certain things that artificial intelligence just can't completely replicate. For example, creative tasks, um, things like creating music, uh, art, um, poetry. It's, it can do those things, but it still can't really do them all that well. So focus on doing things and learning to do things that AI can't fully replicate yet. Um, work on your soft skills. Work on making yourself as a human the best that you can be. And see artificial intelligence as a tool that augments human capabilities rather than something that'll completely replace it, at least for the time being. It's inevitable that most jobs will be taken over by AI, but right now, we just need to look at how AI is advancing and focus on how we can study it and basically tame it, um, becoming indispensable and learning to use it efficiently and effectively. That's our best bet.